So let's say we're doing that calorimetry investigation where we're putting a piece of copper into some water and let's say it's a styrofoam container so the heat exchange is between the water and the copper, right? And the copper is at a little bit of a higher temperature and it's losing heat to the water which is gaining the heat. So the MC delta T of the copper equals the MC delta T of the water. The heat lost by the copper equals the heat gained by the water. And hey, uh, let's say we were looking for, well, what mass of copper uh, actually will be able to uh, 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 make uh, the water change a certain amount of temperature. And this copper starts at this temperature and goes to the next one. Well, we've got a question like that already. And the setup would be MC delta T equals MC delta T. And if we're isolating for the mass of the copper, mass of the copper equals MC delta T of the water divided by the C delta T of the copper. Now that's how we would arrange that formula. Now if this was a calorimetry investigation and you had numbers where you had to report uncertainties, here it comes. All of this right here, as you can see, is multiplication and division. So all the numbers have to be turned into percent uncertainties if we have their absolute uncertainties given to us. But here's the deal with this that you have to be so very careful about, which can actually be quite frustrating, really, <laughs> to do as a calculation. Remember that that delta T, and let's say that that delta T is we have an initial temperature of the water at 25 degrees, 25.0 degrees Celsius, and it goes up to 30 degrees Celsius. Hey, now listen, the difference between those two numbers is going to be addition and subtraction. And what you need to do before you plug in these numbers here in temperatures for uncertainty values and do those uncertainty values as percent is that you need to do the addition and subtraction first. Because remember, let's pretend that thermometers are plus or minus 0.2 here and plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius here for these two temperatures. That means that the temperature change, and if we're going to plug it in as a temperature change of 5.0 degrees Celsius for the water, and let's say that the copper also undergoes 5 degree temperature change going from uh, 35 down to, down to 30 as a final temperature, then the deal is going to be that you need to take those two absolute uncertainties first and do the absolute uncertainty calculation of 5.0 here and then add those two absolutes together to get 0.4 and if that's the temperature change for the water and if it was the temperature change of the copper then going from 35 down to 30 then those numbers have to be put in here and by the way that's absolute uh, you have to add them together because you're subtracting here and therefore that be that is going to be 5.0 plus or minus 0.4 right 0.4 not 0.2 now, when you put all of those in, you need to take those numbers and then you need to uh, turn every number here into its percent uncertainty. And look what I've done, by the way. I've taken a mass and I've said, oh, it was plus or minus 0 0.003. So that means actually that this mass should have been recorded to this many numbers after the decimal, right? That makes sense. Um, so that right there is the uncertainty for that 0 0.003 absolute uncertainty divided by that 70 times 100 turns it into a percent here's 4.19 joules per gram degrees celsius what did i say if you're not given the uncertainty value for that go 0 0.00 and then a 5 after it divided by 4.19 times 100 is the percent for that the percent for that those temperature changes there and then the 0.385 for the copper as a heat capacity there is 0 0.0005 and then divided by 0 0.385 times 100. These numbers here are going to give you very, very low percents. But these two numbers are quite high in terms of their percents, aren't they? Because if you're 0.4 off and you have a 5 degree temperature change, that's pretty high percent. Um, that's about 8% or so. So that's going to be an 8, that's going to be an 8, and these are going to be relatively small. And what you're going to get in the end, when you add all those percents together, is plus or minus 16%. Oh, by the way, I do the math, right? This times this times this, divided by this number, divided by this number, and all of that equals that right there to two significant digits, because I had two numbers here that I inputted into the temperature change. But if you, you could have kept three significant digits if you put that change in here and that change in here, right? Okay. 
So that's plus or minus 16. Remember what we do with that uncertainty? We keep one significant digit. So if you do that, you actually say, well, 16 really is 20% to one significant digit. It would be 1.6 times 10 to the 1, and then you just go 2 times 10 to the 1, or 20% is the error here, which is quite, quite high, actually, if you think about it. If you wanted to turn that back into an absolute, don't know why you would, but anyway, if you wanted to, you know that you're going to have to take that percent, divide it by 100, and then multiply it by this. That's just the reverse operation of this right here. So really, this number divided by point, uh, times 0.2 is going to be, well, that's 760, so 10% uh, of that is 76, so 20% of that is 152, and so that's going to be plus or minus 152 uh, grams over weight. If you're going to keep one significant digit here, that's going to be roughly that many grams as an uncertainty. Whew, that's a lot of work, but that's probably as complicated as it gets.